Have you ever used the Bloxy theme for WordPress? If you haven't, you need to check it out right now. And if you've ever checked it out, you'll know it is the best theme from 2020. But they now have a pro version. And the question is, is it worth it? I'm gonna give you five reasons why I upgraded to Bloxy Pro. So before we get started, you might be thinking to yourself, five reasons, is five enough? Well, that's why I made this video. You see, Bloxy Free is amazing. The way the menu builder works and the way you can do your overlays for mobile menus, I love it. The footer editor, the flexibility and how easy it is to customize is without doubt an amazing feature on its own. The free theme is packed with features. So make sure you give that a try and also use it with Gutenberg. It makes the most of the Gutenberg editor, which is the best way, in my opinion, to make your websites, because with WordPress, Gutenberg integrates with so many other things. Just so you know, down below in the comments, I've got a bunch of bookmarks, so you can jump straight to each section and each reason of why I upgraded to Bloxy Pro. On top of that, there is a link to go and buy Bloxy, and yes, I do have affiliate links down there. Let's go and get into my five reasons for upgrading to Bloxy Pro. So my first reason why I love Bloxy Pro over Bloxy Free is the hook system. Hooks allow you to put content blocks, Gutenberg blocks, or other types of content anywhere you want around the page. Now, this isn't new for any theme. I used to do this with Astra Pro, which also does it quite well. But with Bloxy, there's a fantastic guide and an amazing interface to make that happen. Let's jump onto the screencast and I'll show you how it works. So here I have a website and because Bloxy Pro Companion is installed, I now have a new item on the top here called Show Hooks. And if I click that, it turns on all the different hooks I can use to target to put blocks of information in. So here in the main content, of course, that's all controlled by my block editor. And then further down to the bottom of the page, we have all these hooks once again. So how do I use it? Well, let's go into our dashboard. And then from there, I go to Bloxy Content Blocks. Now this is really, really handy when it comes down to targeting archive pages. So let's look at this project archive content top. And you'll see here that I can include this piece of content that's just the Gutenberg editor. I can include that on my product archive page. I'm using the custom hook in the priority of 10 and I've got a Bloxy hero after. Now you can also do things like expire the time. You can choose the visibility if you just wanna show it on mobile. If you find that your block content has a bit of an issue, you can try the container structure here as well. So this content here is viewed on the project archive page. So I have all these different types of post types here. Um, so you can see I've got a project post type publication, so I wanna target that. So when I visit the site and now look at the project archive page, you can see that this content here that I had is now all on the page. And then I've got my archive listing. So it's really, really handy in terms of targeting and using those content hooks to target around. Now, when it comes to managing those blocks, there's a high amount of uh, variability and things like that that you can use. So because of the way you've got your display conditions, um, you can see here I've got like a media release filter and this release filter is just a bit of short code that I wanted to display on media release pages. Uh, but I can also add things like a user condition. So I could say include if the user is logged in or logged out or if they're an administrator or a different type of role. So if you've got a membership website, this hook system could work out really, really well. Again, my top most favorite feature for Bloxy. Okay, so my second reason for upgrading to Bloxy Pro is the custom code snippets. You can use this for things like Google Analytics, Facebook tracking codes, Hotjar, I use it for my Sales IQ with Zoho Chat. I've used it for Marketing Hub. Any type of tracking code goes great inside the custom code tools. And this is awesome. You might say, well, I can get a plugin for that, but why get another plugin when it's already built into the theme? 
and because of the way it's using Webpack and other kinds of tools, it can still load really fast when you're adding these scripts. So let me show you right now how we can add a snippet to the custom code snippets inside the Bloxy Pro theme. To access the code snippet area, I just go to Customize, where you customize all parts of your theme. We then scroll down. Um, I've got quite a lot of areas here from all my post types. But as you scroll down, you get to the visitor engagement area where it says custom code snippets. I click on that and you can see here that I've got my different scripts. So up the top, I've pasted in my stuff for Zoho Marketing Hub. And then the next one down here on my footer scripts, I have my sales IQ. So all I did was just paste them in. You've got your header scripts, your body scripts and your footer scripts. Just paste the code in and click publish and you're good to go. All right, my third reason why I love Bloxy Pro is the conditional headers and footers. This means you can change your header. You might wanna have a transparent menu on one page, or you might not wanna have the menu at all because it's some sort of landing page. You can also change your footers as well and make them conditional. So you don't have to change them across the whole site. You can change them specifically for different pages so you can control what your header and footer show for the specific landing page that you're creating. Let me show you a quick example now in a screencast. So here we have a website. So what I'm gonna do is go into the customize area to reveal this additional menu feature. And then what I wanna do is click on header. So it's loading everything in there, that's fine. And then what I'm gonna do is click on the contact page. And what I'm gonna do, just to be able to show you how this works, is we're gonna make a custom header for our contact page. So the contact page here is loaded. And what I'm gonna do is say, create a new header, and this is gonna be called the contact header, like that. And we're gonna copy all the elements from the global header. So we create that, great, that's all good. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, inside here, just say turn on transparent functionality, and that will now make that menu up the top transparent. And then I'm gonna say, let's say, we're gonna enable that for a single page. Save the condition like that. And now what I've got is a transparent menu on a single page. So that whenever I have a single page, I've got this specific transparent menu on. There we go, now we have that transparent menu. So we can see that we've only added that as conditions for single pages. So I can edit that condition now. So let's say instead, I wanna put that on my submissions archive page. So then I'll say save conditions, and you'll see now that this particular type of contact header that I've done, once that's saved, will only be enacted on the submissions archive page. So submissions is a post type, that's an archive, so that header will be shown. And again, you can do multiple conditions. So let's first of all go to submissions. So you can see we've got the, the transparent one, but now when I go to the home page, because I've turned off that condition, the old menu comes back on the header, and I end up with this different header effect on the home page because it's been turned off. All right, number four, fonts. You know, fonts are a big deal. And I don't know if you would know this, but loading Google fonts off the Google server is not really the right thing to do if you're looking to conform with GDPR laws. You should really be loading the fonts off your own website. And on top of that, they actually load faster off your own website. But yes, your server will be faster in many cases than the Google server for these fonts. So you should be loading them directly off your own server or from your own CDN. Now, with Bloxy Pro, you can use those Google fonts, you can use your own custom font files, and you can also use Adobe Typekit. Let me show you how I set up Adobe Typekit on this website. So adding Adobe Typekit fonts is really simple with Bloxy. First thing we do is go to the dashboard. We then go to the Bloxy menu, and we're looking at the extensions area here. And this is where you have your free extensions with things like cookie consent and widgets and stuff. We click on the pro extensions that come in when you install the Bloxy Pro Companion. And then we just go to Adobe Typekit here and click activate. When you do that, you can add or edit fonts. So if I go add fonts here, it says project ID. What is that? Well, we get that from the Adobe font website. So if we go to Adobe fonts, I've got my Typekit web fonts and web projects and this one here, VFF 
for the project with Victorian Farmers Federation, which has this on it. So what we're gonna do here is get this project ID. So we just copy that, copy, and then we paste it here and say, fetch fonts. And that will fetch that font and that's it. All I do is close it and that's now added. That's it, nothing else to it, really simple. And now that Adobe Typekit font is available on the front end and it's also available to all my configuration as well, which means that things like Stackable, Cubely, other tools can all use that new font that I've loaded in their configuration on those Gutenberg blocks. All right, reason number five. Yep, number five, we're on my last reason. And it's gonna be a bit of a weird reason for some of you, but the fifth reason is actually because of the free version. You see, the thing is, with open source, it all has to be funded. Somebody's coding these free themes. Somebody's putting the effort in to make Bloxy free. And that's the same guys that are doing Bloxy Pro. So by upgrading, not only are you getting these extra features, but you're supporting those developers who made a fantastic theme for the WordPress community. So remember that, support Bloxy Pro is supporting Bloxy Free and make sure that we have this amazing theme that I believe is likely to remain the best theme for WordPress through 2021. All right, I hope you love those five reasons. If you wanna check it out, click on the links below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and leave a comment below if you have another question or any sort of reason that you wanna know about and I'll be happy to help you out. I'll see you in the next video.